Hello YouTube! Today I'm going to show you how to perform the auto adoption of Unify networking products at scale. Before we can start, I have to cover a few basic things in this setup. This tutorial assumes that you've got a hosted Unify controller and would like to add all of your endpoints to it. First off, always segregate your Unify management network from the user LAN and especially the guest LAN. I'll show you how later on in the video. Second, DHCP and DNS has to be active on your Unify management network in order to perform the auto adoption. And the third, always route your traffic to the hosted Unify controller via VPN. Because a big portion of the communication between the controller and the endpoints is still not encrypted. According to the Unified documentation, every one of their network devices will be looking for a controller on its first start or after the factory reset. With that in mind, let's go to our first diagram so I can explain you how that works. This is oversimplified, but the general idea is next. Once your access point is connected to the network, it will go ahead and ask the HCP server for an IP address and the local area network domain name. After that, it will go ahead and ask DNS server if it knows unify.wifi.mgnt. You will probably ask, why exactly is it looking for that specific name? Well, every Unify product will start looking at this portion of the DNS name, Unify. And then after that, you just have your local area network domain part. So because our DNS server knows this host, it will come back to the access point with the result of 10.10.10.1. After that, our access point will go ahead and try to communicate with the Unify controller. Usually it's gonna be something like, hello controller, please pend me for adoption. Controller will respond, no problem. And then controller will also let you as admin know that there is a new AP for adoption. Again, this is overly simplified, but gives you a rough idea on what's happening at the background. I've also added protocol types and ports for every step of the process. So you can go ahead and add those on your firewall systems. Now let's switch to the actual practical network diagram of how we usually configure the Unify Wi-Fi networking stack. So it might look complicated at first, but I'll break it down for you now. But this is that separation that I've been talking about at the beginning of the video. To achieve this separation, we need to have at least two VLANs on the switch. One VLAN has to be untagged and the other VLAN has to be tagged. So the untagged VLAN will be routing management traffic and the tagged VLAN will be routing any other traffic. If we follow the stream here, access point will connect to the switch, then the firewall, then it will figure out its IP address and all of the other things I've covered on the previous diagram. And then it will go ahead through the site to site VPN to our hosting site and then inform our controller that they are ready for adoption. Now, if we follow the tagged network stream, it will again go to switch, then touch the firewall, but the firewall would not allow the traffic to go anywhere else but the internet, as you can see here. Now, with all that theory covered and before I finish this video, I wanted to show you an example on how we can figure our OPN Sense firewall to perform everything that was shown earlier. Just a little side note here, I will not be covering the switch side configuration, but you can probably figure that out on your own. So here is our demo OPN Sense firewall. And what we need to do is go to interfaces, then other types, and then VLAN. Now just click add and add your VLAN for the appropriate interface. Let's create a guest network VLAN first. So with the tag of two and description is guest. Now let's add the management VLAN.
Now when our VLANs are ready, let's go to assignments and add both interfaces. Okay, now when we have our interfaces configured, let's go to the DHCP configuration. I'll configure the guest LAN first. So let's enable the service. Then define the range, scroll down and set the domain name. That's pretty much it for the gas network, then just hit save. Now let's switch to the management network. Again, enable the service, then specify your IP range, then make sure that you specify the domain name because without it, the setup will not work. You can safely go ahead and click save one more thing to notice is if you want your access points to be on the static IP, just add the static DHCP mapping in here. Now with that done, we need to go ahead and create the DNS record for our Unify controller. Go to services, unbound DNS and then overrides. Now add the new host override. Here we need to strictly specify Unify and then enter your local area network domain here. Leave it as type A and then specify the IP address of your Unify controller. Give it a description and you are ready to go. Click apply changes. Now the last thing in the setup would be to add firewall rules. First, let's go to aliases and add some records to make our life easier. Now with our aliases configured, let's go ahead and add some firewall rules. I'll start with the guest VLAN first because we only need to add one rule in here. And that rule would be to allow internet access only, no LAN access. If you need to do the same on your firewall, just follow along and pause when needed. So this is the most important part of network isolation. When you choose a gateway in your firewall rule, it means that you only allow internet access. Click save and click apply changes. Now let's set up our management VLAN.
these three rules will allow our access points to reach our Unify controller. And now the last touch would be to allow internet access. Even though it's a management network, I still want to separate it from all the other networks. And if there is a need, then allow access explicitly. At this point, just hit apply changes. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. If you get stuck with your auto adoption, we are happy to help. Reach out to us via email, help at gateway-it.com or down in the comments below.